I'm Mella. And I'm Don. And today we're taking you on a tour of our tiny home bus conversion. We decided to build our tiny home inside a 1996 MCI D3 40 foot bus. After three years of pouring our hearts and souls into this conversion, we decided it was close enough to being done and we were ready to hit the road. Now we weren't going to do a tour until we were completely finished, but we got so many comments. People want to see a tour, so here it is. So come on in, let's show you around. Welcome to our living room. Our countertop is an absolute pride and joy in the bus. It came from an ash tree in Don's parents' backyard. We milled it and turned it into this butcher block countertop with the slive edge. We really wanted our kitchen countertop to be really big and spacious, so we continued from our entertainment center straight into the kitchen. In our entertainment center, we have a touchstone electric fireplace and a touchstone TV lift. This doubles both as somewhere that we will laze around on the sofa to watch movies and it's also a standing desk. For internet right now we kind of go with everything. We have Starlink, AT&T, Verizon and T-Mobile. That way we know we're always connected because we do work remotely from the road. Keeping the temperature really comfortably inside is important to us. So we have a weather station to help us know what the temp is inside as well as outside. We have the mini split up front as well as one in the back. That's heating, cooling, a dehumidifier, a fan, whatever you want from it. We built a conduit wall to run all our electrical wires in and we use that as well to hold all our remotes. We have some hooks behind the driver's seat where we can hang jackets and bags close to the entrance. During the bus build, we took a little break and went off to the island of Luthera in the Bahamas. We didn't have an intention to name our bus, neither of us really thought about it, but we did name our bus Eleutheria. We loved the island and when we learned where the name came from, which is freedom in Greek, we knew that was the name for our bus. Now I have to address the front of the bus. It is not complete. There are wires hanging out. There are still jobs to be done. There's a lot to be desired in the front, but we felt that the house part was livable and we could live without finishing the front yet. But don't worry, there are plans to make the front just as beautiful as the back. We'd lived in Los Angeles for about 20 years and we knew we wanted a change but we just didn't know where we wanted to move to. We'd been watching a lot of tiny home videos for years, just for fun. We were like, wait a minute, why don't we just buy a bus? We could own our own home sooner. We could travel for fun, because we like to. Plus, in the interim, we could kind of be looking for a place to settle down. Our sofa is multifunctional. It is where I sit when we drive. We have three seat belts that are bolted into the metal frame of the bus. I sit right up front with Don so I can help him navigate. And I actually love it because I get to turn around and look out all the different windows. I'm not the type of person that sits still when we drive, so it suits me very well. We can convert this sofa into a full-size bed if we have guests. And Don has actually used it when we first moved in the bus. I got really sick and he slept out here and he said he absolutely loved it. We also wanted to make it really comfortable for lounging around so we divided it up into three sections that could pull out so we can also make it an L couch or actually a U couch is our preferred method for lying in front of the TV watching a movie. Now we have plenty of storage in this sofa. In the front, when you walk in the door, there's a shelf for our shoes because this is a no-shoe zone. Even without shoes, it can get dirty in here real fast. 
there is storage underneath every single pullout and the very front one's actually a little cat room for the cats to hang out. We keep a cat bed in there and some cat toys. We have cup holders which makes it nice and easy for traveling days. The arms of the sofa also have some hidden storage in them and on this end of the sofa is the entrance to the cat cedar. Our cat cedar is one of the smartest things we did in this bus build and the cats actually love it. Upstairs it houses all their food and water and they go down a ramp into the luggage bay or as we like to call it the basement. The cat litter stays down there and we don't have it traped around upstairs. You now I also wired up a 12 volt fan so that there's an exhaust fan pulling any of the stink out of the cat's litter area and blowing it out the bottom of the bus. We also insulated this cat's area. We got insulation at the bottom on in all four walls. And they even like to just go down there and take a nap on the first landing. It's kind of their quiet space to get away from us. When we first started looking, we were looking at school buses because we thought it'd be cool to build out a schoolie. But the more research that we really did and thought about building a home inside of it, uh, we started looking at coaches. And the reason being is because the coaches, chassis, and our Detroit Diesel 60 engine, the transmission, if you keep these things in good shape, that last for a million miles and it's a super solid coach with giant luggage bays which gives us lots of easy places to put utilities and all the things you'd need to have as a working home. Now because we have a huge countertop that also means we have a ton of storage underneath it. It's divided up. The first part with the entertainment center is more of our tech gear and computer stuff. We even have a junk drawer and then from here back is all kitchen supplies. Now our kitchen cabinets are the only piece of furniture in the bus that we didn't build ourselves. We went with clear view cabinets from Menards and it was so much faster and cheaper to do it this way. We use RV Labs locking latches on all of our kitchen cabinets. This way we know our cabinets are locked when we're traveling and they won't go flying open when we turn a corner. Now there are two items that I wanted for my dream bus kitchen and that is stainless steel, apron sink, and dishwasher. We pretty much based the rest of the kitchen and design around these two items. It is big for a bus sink, but it's actually smaller than the standard house size apron sinks. I love it. I wanted to have a big sink that I could fit my pots and pans in because that's pretty much the only thing I hand wash. I love our little dishwasher. We use it every day. It's perfect for a couple who cook a lot. We looked at a lot of different options to make sure we'd have safe drinking water on the road. And we love our Acuva water filter. It is filtered water on demand. We don't have to ever worry about it and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Underneath the sink is the UV LED water purification system. In order to save power, we have a switch right here for our seven gallon electric water heater. It lights up so we can always remember to turn it off when we don't need hot water. This is just peel and stick tile. It looks so good and it was so easy to install. And the best part is it's lightweight. Wherever possible, we try to use items that were super light. Now we documented our entire bus build. So if you're interested in seeing exactly how we built something, do check out the playlists in the description below. There will also be a link down in the description for our resources page, which lists everything that we've used in our bus build. Under the sink, we have a Reva shelf pull out trash can and also some slide out shelving for our pantry and some cleaning supplies. We are lucky enough to live very comfortably in our bus. We are not hurting for anything in our kitchen. We're able to fit underneath this corner cabinet an Instapot, a waffle maker, a Vitamix, and our induction cooktop. Now we decided to go with a portable cooktop for a couple different reasons. We wanted the ability to put it away so that we could have all this open counter space for other projects. And if say we have a few cloudy days, we're worried about power usage, then we don't have to cook on electric. We have a backup butane cooktop, which we can pull out and put in the space too. 
Now we put this little fan here for a couple of reasons too. It is great at getting some airflow in the bus and you can just flip it around, open the window, and it acts as an exhaust fan while we're cooking. Now we took out most of the original bus windows and put in RV windows instead. We wanted to make sure we could open up windows on either side and create really good airflow. So on an 80 degree day, we don't need to use air conditioning. These little fans are super helpful at helping to create that airflow and we actually have more of them and that's one of the things we plan on doing is putting some more of those in. Now something we did build for our kitchen cabinets was toe kick drawers. Instead of wasting that toe kick area, we decided to utilize it for storage. We also use the toe kicks for a wine cellar. We decided to go with a standard apartment size residential fridge. We love it. And our friend Ivan gave us a handy dandy little trick to lock the fridge so it stays closed while we're driving. We went with a microwave convection oven. It is also an air fryer and a toaster, so it saves us space from having all those different appliances. Now on this side of the kitchen, we decided to go with open shelving because we wanted to be able to access our circuit box. We secured down our fruit basket and then the other baskets, they store coffee and tea and supplies like that, but they won't slide out because we made a little lip here that prevents them from going anywhere. Now we'll get more into our electrical system later, but we have a wire run pulling our power up from the basement into the house and this is a removable panel so we can always access it. Now we have a lot of different lighting options for different moods and times of the day. We have ceiling mounted lights, LED strip lights, under cabinet touch lighting, reading lights above the dining table and the sofa, and skylights. These are a DIY build that we did with plexiglass. We absolutely love our skylights. They let in so much natural light, but it's important to have covers for them too, to put in on really hot days to keep the heat out. Now, that's something we haven't quite figured out yet. We're just using Reflectix right now and shoving it in there, which works, but it's not pretty. Ultimately, we will get better looking covers for our skylights and for our front windscreen. One of the biggest things we hear in comments for people that we don't interact with regularly is, why did you take all the windows out? And I'm so glad that we did. We took out the bus's original Lexar windows, that's just a plastic window, and replaced some of them with double pane insulated RV windows. We're able to regulate the temperature in here because of that. The weakest links in our entire build are leaving two of the bus's original windows in, and it's not dark in here. During the daylight with our skylights, there's plenty of light that comes into the bus. We made a fold down table also out of ashwood. It's a great place to eat our meals looking out the window. And one of my favorite little multi use pieces of furniture is the ottomans that we use as our chairs. It also has storage, it's a footrest, and you flip the top over and you have a coffee table. For insulation, we use Ceratex against the metal of the bus, a ceramic paper. It acts as a thermal break between the metal to your walls. On top of that, inside the walls is sheep's wool. It was super easy to work with. It's non-toxic and it regulates moisture just because of its natural properties. All of our windows have cellular shades. They're very easy to just pull down, lift up, not just for privacy, but also for temperature control. Inside of the cellular shades is a metallic fabric that helps insulate the windows. Every step, it was something we didn't know how to do, and that is challenging. It is really hard, and as soon as you start getting good at it, you're 
finished with the job. <laughs> and now I'll be showing you around the bathroom. We wanted to have as big a living space as possible and as big a bedroom as possible, which means we got a little bitty bathroom, but it's probably one of the fanciest rooms in our whole build. We decided to go with a composting toilet because we didn't want to deal with a black tank after running an RV. We custom made our composting toilet with a little bit of style and used parts from Kildwick to put it all together. We do divert our liquid waste down into our gray tank and we have a little exhaust fan that pulls anything that might be smelling around in there out and under the bus. Now the first thing you see behind me here is our little rack for our towels. This piece of wood was milled from the backyard. This little container was gifted to us from my aunt and uncle. Thank you guys. We have a Turkish towels for the bathroom. They dry really quick and they take up a lot less space, which is great when you have a tiny bathroom like us. Keeping with the worldly theme, we've got some Moroccan tile wallpaper, which really lightens up the room. It's a small room, but who says you can't have fun in the bathroom? Now we built our drawers and shower as one unit. This way we have super deep drawers. We didn't really have to downsize any of our bathroom essentials. And we were even able to add our wastebasket in the bottom drawer. Now it's such a tiny space. We didn't want to use hard handles. So Mella found these little leather handles. Like Mella said earlier, we have links to everything we use in our build in our resource page. I was a little bit concerned about going tiny that I would feel claustrophobic in a tiny space. Space is very important to me but I realized that it's all about creating a really good flow. So we spent a long time talking about our design, going and seeing RVs and looking at their layouts and trying to decide what felt claustrophobic and cramped and which ones created a feeling of space. shower walls which are made out of a faux marble and our Nebbia shower head which uses 50% as much water as a regular shower does. We wanted to have a sink in the bathroom so we found this tiny porcelain sink. Custom touches in the room include a little soap holder, toothbrush and toothpaste holder which was made out of the same wood that we use for our kitchen countertops. I don't know why, but for some reason we really got it in our heads that we wanted a round mirror with some backlighting. So Mello found this cute little mirror and we built a medicine cabinet behind it to add a little more character to the bathroom. We also installed a max air fan in the bathroom. We use it as an exhaust fan and to circulate some air through the entire bus. Now one thing we love is that we kept this giant window right next to the toilet. So when you have to sit on the toilet, you get a beautiful view just like this. The single biggest question we get asked about our bus is why don't we have doors on the bathroom? Well, we planned to, but we thought it was more important to just get out and start enjoying living in the bus. And honestly, living this tiny with or without doors, it's not really that big a deal. When we were discussing what size bus to get, we talked about what we are okay giving up to go tiny and what we're not okay giving up. And for me, um, as a Pilates teacher, I was giving up my Pilates studio in Los Angeles so that I could travel full time, but I wanted to be able to keep up my practice. And for me, the most important thing was that I had to continue to work while we were traveling, which means we had to build a music studio in it. The last room, the bedroom, is very exciting. It's not just a bedroom. It's also a Pilates studio, a closet, and a music studio. So let me show you how we do all that in this tiny space. Don and I designed a Murphy bed around a queen size mattress. In order to fit it in, because we don't have a roof raise, we have to turn the bed sideways, which is fine, because we're short people. We have these bedside towers where we can store water, cell phones, a book, whatever you want next to your bed, and then a bunch of overhead storage. There's a gas strut in these cabinets to hold them open and magnets to hold them closed. We have undermount lighting here too for reading at night and overhead lighting for when we need it to be nice and bright. Now the reason we wanted the Murphy bed to go up and out of the way is to have floor space for the Pilates studio. The bed just rolls up into place. 
We have locks at the top to hold it up in place, but also locks at the bottom. So when we're driving, the bed can stay down and we can make sure it doesn't roll around. It's 100% worth getting this bed up out of the way because now look at all the space we have. If you're curious about any specific details about the build, we probably talked about it either in our uh, blog or we documented the whole thing on YouTube and we'll include a link to that playlist to the bus build over here. We store some of the Pilates apparatus underneath the bed and then the other two main pieces are here. This is what you call a Pilates tower and you use springs for resistance. We had to modify it a little bit because of course it had to have a double purpose. This is also a ladder so we can go out of the emergency hatch in the ceiling because there is a future plan to have a roof deck up there. This is our closet. We use baskets and the rolling method with our clothes. That makes it really easy to find what you're looking for in a basket. There's actually two rows of baskets. There's another one hidden in the back and a lip over here again too to make sure the baskets don't fall out when we're driving. We have plenty clothes. We can go for two weeks without doing any laundry. We have a small space for hanging clothes and our second mini split up above. We have two hatches in the back here that give you access to the engine. We didn't want to close this area in just in case we ever need to get in there for some repairs. We've made it nice and easy. We love having an all electric system, but we always want to make sure we have backup plans to stay warm and to eat. So just like we have a little butane cooktop, we also have a propane buddy heater, just in case. Last but not least is Don's music studio. Now this is still a work in progress, but even with it the way it is right now, he can write music, record music, and test out music software right from home. The Pilates window chair doubles as a seat for the desk. And then we have this toolbox over here. In the top, it's actually a charging station for all our camera batteries and everything. And then in the shelves below, there are hard drives and various wires. You can close the top and lock it. And then all the drawers are locked and won't go flying open. We spent about three years working on this conversion. What I can tell you is that the coach itself cost $18,000. I was keeping track of all the receipts when we first started the build and I think when the build costs, including the cost of the bus, got close to around $40,000, I just stopped counting. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point I'll be brave enough to go through those receipts and calculate it and then we'll probably make a video about it. One of the reasons we chose this coach is because it has these massive luggage bays. It runs from one side of the bus to the other side of the bus. And this second bay here, we chose to put our electrical system. For our system, we have three Battleborn GC3 batteries for a total of 810 amp hours. We've got them mounted to the metal of the bus as well as strapped in just to make sure they don't go anywhere. The rest of our components are almost completely Victron Electronics. We've got two 3000 watt inverters. We kind of divided that up between the front and the back of the bus upstairs for our power needs. And to charge our batteries up, we've got 1400 watts of solar on the front of the bus, room in the back for more solar. And we also have a 30 amp port and a 50 amp port. Now this is just the quick overview. We do have a video where I go over all the details. If you want to learn more about solar or electronics, it's a pretty good video if I do say so myself. We'll link to it over here. Now in our back luggage bay is where we've opted to put all of our plumbing system. We've got two 135 gallon water tanks, one for fresh water and one for our gray tank. Our water tanks are behind the waterboard and our waterboard and tanks are all mounted to a massive metal frame that we had created. All of our supply lines, we just used a PEC system. It was fairly simple to use. Lots of shutoff valves everywhere. So if there is ever a leak, we can stop it at the source. And then the heart of our plumbing system is our waterboard. Our waterboard has all the components we need to keep the system running. We've got a 12 volt pump, 
which pumps the water in from our freshwater tank through a filter, and then it goes on to our system. In our system, we have a pressure tank, so our entire system is pressurized. We don't have to rely just on the pump for water pressure. There's a gauge so we can monitor our water pressure, a Schrader valve if we ever need to blow it out to winterize our system, a standard hose hookup if we ever need to have access to water on the side of the bus, and then our supply lines running out along here, splitting off, one going to our water heater and the other one going to our cold water mains that go up into the bus. One other note on our 12 volt pump, I did put a on off switch up here. This way I can just turn it off without having to go upstairs into the coach and pull the fuse anytime I know I need to do some work on it down here. And of course we have a standard dump connector right here. So we can just dump at any dump station. Now the bus's factory AC compressor and everything used to be in this meshed bay. We just took it all out. We have our condenser unit right here for the front mini split. And then if we do ever need to get access to our hot water heater, this kind of slides open. Our mini split compressor slides over out of the way and we can reach back in the basement of the bus to work on the hot water heater. Now our back mini split compressor unit is mounted next to the engine in the very back bay. It's on a special mount that swivels out of the way if we need access to the engine. There's plenty of ventilation because there's no floor back there and the engine doesn't care how much hot air it gets blown on by the compressor. Now our front luggage bay, we went ahead and kept it open right now for storage. We want to put more of a system in this side so we can just pull it all out. But for right now, we're just using these big 27 gallon totes. I was surprised how little of a transition there was for moving Tiny. I feel like everything was planned out so specifically for our stuff and everything fit and we still had some space left over. When we talked to people who were traveling full time in their own conversions or in RVs, they always talk about how it's great because it doesn't matter where you are, you're home at the end of the day. and it's really doubly so true for us. We are so at home. It's hard to express just how comfortable we really are in here. It's a level of comfort that brings you like peace and calm and you just feel safe in this space even if you're parked in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Inside is your little safe zone. I can speak for the both of us when I say there were definitely plenty of times in the middle of the build where we were like, what are we doing? <laughs> Why did we do this? We had faith in our plan and I can tell you that now I can say it was 100% worth it. There's just, oh, I'm going to start tearing up. <laughs> There's just no comparison. An RV could never be what this home is to us. It is so designed around our needs and everything we want and our personalities. And I mean, it's the best home I've ever had. <laughs> now that we're traveling full time, we started making travel videos. And we've had so many adventures just in three or four months looking back at the videos it's amazing some of the things we've gotten to do so if you want to join us on our bus travels and adventures we'll leave the playlist for you up here to watch <laughs>